this is Erze Schim, this time from my hangar with a small review about two FPV cams. Uh, actually about three because I also compared to my old one. I got two really cheap but good uh, FPV cams from uh, Security Camera 2000 or RunCam as their model is named. And I have here PZ04 20H, which is the black one, this here, which is in a plastic casing uh, and it's the cheaper one. It has uh, only 600 lines, but that's really, really much. It also has connectors on the back for configuring. And the other one is the Sky model, the silver metal casing version, which I already installed here in the mini quad. Here I installed it with tape, sorry for that. And I tilted it up a bit because when you fly with the multi-copter, uh, most of the times you, flew, you fly forwards and then it's good if the cams tilted up a bit. For the racing type, if you mostly just hover around, you can leave it straight. This is the, the setup cable which I don't want to fly around with and once it's set up you don't need this extra weight. Yeah, weight, um, lightweight uh, and it's very good fabricated and it's extra small. I mean, didn't see a smaller cam and this one has 650 TV lines which is really more than you ever need. Let's fire it up, as they say. You see the picture here on my external monitor, which is just for me to set up. I will show you the live video later and how good the quality is and the quality compression. But first thing is to show you the setup. You really just, you have a little joystick here with a push button and for directions. Setting it up on a monitor is quite convenient. And I also recorded here on the FetShark built-in DVR to show it to you in, in better quality. What do we have here? The lens. Yeah, and this is, I mean, you have a lot of features here like image adjustment where you can adjust the sharp, sharpness and everything, day and night switching and what, what else. But the most important thing is the lens. And it says manual here. Initially, um, for my first flight, I couldn't fly because I set this to you have DC, I had to switch to manual and exposure shutter to auto. This is, so you set it to manual and then in exposure you set it auto. That's a bit weird for me, but this is what it works the best. Yeah, automatic gain, high or middle, that's not. Wide dynamic range is good. That's, um, if you have very different lighting conditions on one frame, for example, you have parts of the image uh, that are shadowy and dark and other parts are bright sunlight. With white dynamic range you have a good contrast in uh, the bright and the dark uh, scene at the same time. So that's good if you fly in, in very fast changing light conditions. Yeah, white balance, that's really a cosmetic issue. Just I had it to outdoor which looked very bluish in the outside also. No, I guess I just leave it at indoor and it's okay. With image, uh, yeah, you have to read what, what all these options are for. Contrast and sharpness are, are okay to, to set up a bit. Leave it just around the middle. Yeah, if the cam uh, has a really dark setting, then it switches to black and white mode, like it does now. And then uh, it takes some time, oh, it, now it, it was fast. It has some delay from day to night and from night to day. Uh, and you can set how fast it should uh, switch back to color mode instead of uh, black and white mode. Uh, well, quite a few. <laughs> it's all also in, in German, but I stick with English. I'm used to it. Yeah, so this joystick connector, uh, it's really convenient to use. 
Next I show you shortly a comparison between the silver, the black and this old model here. <laughs> but now let's see how this looks like. This is my messy hanger with the silver cam. You see uh, really bright colors, good lights and in dark mode it switches to black white and then comes back to color again. So yeah, really sharp. Not sure if the DVR from the Fat Shark delivers all the sharpness that the cam is capable of. This is the other one, the plastic version. So here I set up both in next to each other. On the left side the plastic version and on the right side the silver 650 lines version. And here you see the old cam on the left versus the new metal version. So the old cam is still quite good but not as sharp. Yeah, but the most important thing is how does it work when you want to fly with it, uh, when you fly with a fast little multicopter like my lovely drone frames dr q 250 So let's see this cam in action. This was last Friday when I had time to fly a bit right after work. Here I found this construction with a nice little course here. And I didn't need an extra prop, so it all went well. Yeah, you see some interference. Of course, if the heavy machinery here comes between me and the copter, but signal is, is okay. It it's flyable if you're not too far away. I guess if you fly fast you even with this cam you don't see power lines this will just work with hd then these are some example shots with changing light conditions and i'm really happy how it changes here in this dark pavilion the interference of course is from the video signal but it's flyable with 5.8 and you see uh, this wasn't a, a really bright sunny day, but it was okay. And here in the woods, oh, it's it's really good. So uh, I like the, and you see the sharpness is also good to see most of the branches. The plastic version, yeah, it feels cheap. Of course, it's plastic. There's this protective cap, uh, and both of them are in the lens to be 2.8 millimeters which is wide angle and which I like for my flying style. You can uh, choose between different uh, lens options and even with the cheap, cheap uh, plastic version you get a lot of accessories. Um, the black one has another connector for these uh, joystick type, no, but it works the same. So you have this setup cable, you don't need it all the time. And on the other side you have the on the other side you have this video connection cable which which has a good connection. Integrate that in your in your receiver, your video receiver. You have to feed it with 12 volts. I think it says somewhere 9 to 12 volts, but you can check that. Another interesting part is this infrared filter. You basically disassemble it, uh, glue it with this double-sided tape on the chip, and it is between lens and and the chip, and it blocks blocks infrared light. I'm not sure at the moment why you would want this. Yeah, this is a mounting option, it's just a bracket, a uh, metal bracket with some screws. Uh, so you can tilt it and screw it in if you have it on a plane. Most of the times with the multicopters you just have uh, already a frame where you can insert these little board cams. The silver one, which is a B 
bit more heavy, uh, really small and has really no air drag or reduced air drag because it's so uh, so curvy. Of course it also has a bracket to mount. It also had these servo cables which I cut and integrated it to my system. And another one was funny. This is a normal chinch connector that will fit easily with my standard chinch connector styles. And this is a 12 volt plug where the other side looks like this here. So for testing you can power it up this way and hook it up to your monitor directly. So that's yeah, the easiest video connection. So you get this cable with it and the nice box and also the joystick thingy we also used, we already used. So thanks for watching this video. Hope I uh, could show you some useful stuff. Uh, don't forget how to set up the cam uh, to have it uh, ready for different light conditions. So I had the problem that when I wanted to fly with it, I just saw a white image and that was it. Because I set it up here in the, in the hangar in different light conditions and I thought it was an auto but it wasn't. So get the lens to manual and the exposure to auto and you're good to go. And the other things like sharpness and day and night and, and color. Uh, yeah, they are all just cosmetic issues. Most important is lens manual, exposure auto. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe me if you didn't. Uh, share it, uh, comment, ask questions as ever. Thanks, bye.